Where is the edge of our solar system? For something as complex and nuanced as our solar system, it's quite an interesting subject. We have the eight planets, of course, but does Neptune's orbit really mark the edge of our solar system? Not exactly, is what most people shall tell you. So where exactly is the end of the solar system then? Today we're gonna explore where the solar system ends and interstellar space begins. Going out from the Sun and passing the Earth and Mars, we find the asteroid belt. A ring of millions and millions of asteroids that circle the Sun between 2.2 and 3.2 astronomical units from the center. One astronomical unit, or AU, is the distance between the Earth and the Sun, roughly equating to 150 million kilometers. The asteroid belt, however, is most obviously not the edge of our solar system, as beyond it we find the planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. While very differently composed, primarily of gaseous envelopes, Jupiter and Saturn are still very much planets. And even beyond Saturn, the solar system very clearly goes on, as early modern astronomers like William Herschel and Johann Gottfried Gale discovered when they found the planets of Uranus and Neptune. To date, Neptune remains the last discovered planet in our solar system. Neptune's orbit is very distant, orbiting the Sun only once every 164 years at a distance of over 30 astronomical units. While Neptune is definitely the last of the planets, it surely is not the last of the solar system. In 1930, the discovery of the then ninth planet of Pluto expanded the solar system further out. We now know Pluto itself is part of the wider Kuiper Belt, a distinct ring of small bodies primarily composed of frozen volatiles such as methane, ammonia and water, leftover remnants from when the solar system was forming, too cold and too distant to form into planets. The Kuiper Belt extends roughly from 30 AU to 50 AU and is home to many bodies besides Pluto, such as Haumea, Quawar and Makey Makey. It's a long-standing misconception that the edge of the Kuiper Belt is the edge of our solar system. Since no planets can form here or beyond, we have clearly crossed the border. But the Kuiper Belt is not the end of our solar system. The Kuiper Belt isn't even a cohesive border, being blurry at best and consists itself out of more varied disks, such as the Scatter Disk or the Trans-Neptunian Belt, which are even more blurry borderlines. These belts are essentially just thousands of irregularly orbiting rocks, categorizing them into arbitrary categories like Plutinos, TNOs, Ice Dwarfs, etc. is hardly a precise task. There's infamously Setna, a cold, distant body that orbits far beyond the Kuiper Belt. Its orbit is highly eccentric, moving from 76 to over 937 astronomical units from the Sun. Long was believed that Setna was anomalous, that something like it would be uncommon. We were wrong. Dozens of more Setnoids have been discovered since. Perhaps orbits aren't what we are looking for to define the solar system's edge. After all, this is about our Sun, not the planets. Between 75 and 90 astronomical units from the Sun, something else happens. It is not known exactly where, but somewhere in this region lies the termination shock. The solar wind is a stream of charged particles released from the upper atmosphere of the Sun. The solar wind is traversing at supersonic speeds within the solar system. But at the termination shock, 90 astronomical units out, the solar wind falls below the speed of sound and becomes subsonic due to interstellar countercurrents. The region directly beyond is known as the Helios Heath, with the wind still dominant, albeit significantly weaker. At roughly 113 astronomical units from the Sun, however, the winds grind to a complete halt. Here we enter the zone known as the Heliopause. Here the solar wind is stopped by the counterflow of the interstellar winds from surrounding stars. In the heliopause, both winds cancel each other out, marked by a sharp drop in particles originating from our own sun. At roughly 121 astronomical units, according to measurements taken by the Voyager spacecraft, the heliopause ends. And now the interstellar winds dominate, and interstellar space 
begins. It was a long-standing theory that the Sun moving through the interstellar medium produced a bow shock, around 230 astronomical units from the Sun. But in 2012 it was determined it probably does not exist by the Voyager space probes. So this clearly shouldn't be the edge of our solar system either. An important note when trying to determine the solar system's edge by the solar wind is that it's not spherical. Because the sun moves, the wind's strength is more powerful in its wake than in its bow. Thus, the border may be closer or further in or out depending on the direction where the sun's influence on space ends. If we go even further out, we can reach the Hills Cloud, a theoretical cloud of cometary objects that lies between 1000 and 1500 astronomical units from the sun and possibly extends up to 30,000 astronomical units from the sun, being itself part of the much larger cometary envelope that is, the Oort Cloud. The Oort Cloud was first hypothesized in the 1930s by Ernst Uppik and Jan Oort to explain the continued presence of comets in our solar system. However, both these clouds remain purely hypothetical to this day, so we don't really know how big it is, or even if it exists. Even further out than the Oort cloud, beyond 30,000 astronomical units, we are almost half a light year from the sun. Out here, there's little to indicate the presence of the solar system. The sun itself has become a dim star amidst a sea of others. Interstellar space continues right up to the nearest star systems to our own, Alpha Centauri, Barnard Star, and many others. The edge of the solar system is hard to define, so people use different definitions. There's no clear answer to where the solar system ends and interstellar space begins. Whether you use the orbit of Neptune or the end of the heliosphere, there's not much precision to it. Most of the regions are poorly defined due to being so distant from the Sun. My personal opinion would be that the edge of the Kuiper belt is probably a good reference point. Further than that, it is the traditional end of the solar system's accretion disk from whence it formed. Even though there is stuff further out, it marks a clear line. Objects further out did not form there naturally. Current theories vary, but the most scientifically favored theories are that these objects were lifted or catapulted further out, instead of forming there. That said though, this line is as blurry as any other. Wherever you want to put the edge of our solar system, it's more likely to be a transitional zone than a clearly defined line. So, it's been a couple of months. In the continuing wake of 2020, the channel is off to a rough start. Nevertheless, I'm still here, and I hope I'll be able to continue making videos this year. This has been Yuji Science, and I hope to see you again in the next video.